In reinforcement learning, an agent must discover a policy that maximizes the sum of rewards it achieves when interacting with some environment. In this simple grid world, an agent will receive a reward of plus one if it enters this space with a circle in it, and after that, the evaluation will immediately end. It will receive an immediate reward of negative one if it enters this square that has the X in it, after which point the evaluation will end. Now the agent will start in this square here, and as we can see, there are two paths to this goal, given that the agent's actions are to move up, down, left, or right. In addition to these final rewards, there is a movement cost of negative 0 0.04. That means that every movement action the agent takes will incur this small penalty. So if the agent went from here to there, it would be rewarded with a penalty of minus 0 0.04, and then here, subtract 0 0.04 again, then here again, then here again, and then, even at this last step, moving from here to here, it subtracts this amount from its reward and then gets the final terminal reward of plus one. And we can easily avoid this negative state. But if the agent's actions are not 100% reliable, then the problem becomes trickier. So the agent can move up, down, left, or right, but only reliably 80% of the time. So that means that if the agent chooses to move up, 80% of the time it will move up, but 10% of the time it will move to the right instead, and another 10% of the time it will move, or at least try to move to the left, which will bounce it back to this state because there's a wall there. In general, the agent moves the direction it wants to 80% of the time, and 10% of the time it will move left of the desired action, and the other 10% it will move right of the desired action. So for example, if the agent were here and chose to move up, it would go there 80% of the time, it would fall into this sort of negative reward trap 10% of the time, and the final 10% of the time it would bounce off this wall and be stuck back in this state again. There is no case in which the agent will move in the opposite direction of the one it intends to move in. Given these circumstances here, there are no longer two easy paths to the goal. Rather, the optimal path is this one here. So from the start, the agent will prefer to move up and then to the right. Now, sometimes it may bump against these walls, but in general, it should make steady progress towards the goal. At this step, it might sometimes accidentally move down, in which case it will choose to move up and then try going right again. However, from this state, there is still a small risk of falling into this pit, which once again has a negative reward. From these states, the agent chooses to move left. Now the reason that it does not go this shorter route is that the danger is too great. There are extra movement costs associated with taking this longer path, but the total penalty from movement costs of taking the longer route does not match the dangerous high penalty of accidentally falling to the right here. Now, if you consider this policy and then want to find out the expected reward the agent will receive from each state, if it follows this policy, then you get these results here. Now, these boxed-in values are rewards from the environment. Those are known. These other values are calculated and approximate values, but they match 
the policy that we just saw here. In particular, the assumption made from, for example, this state is that the reason the value of this state is 0 0.611 is that if you move left from that state and then keep taking the designated action in each of these states you encounter, you would expect to, in the end, get a reward of 0 0.611. This incorporates both the costs of traversing all of these spaces, as well as the cost of delays ca caused by undesirable actions. For example, if I'm in this state and choose to move left but bounce off that wall, I incur an extra movement penalty. We can verify these values with our knowledge of how to calculate expected values. For example, in this state, the optimal action is to move to the right. So the reason that this is the expected value is that there is an 80% chance of getting a reward of 1 in the next state, because if I move to the right, I'll get up in this state, and that's the reward from it. There is a 10% chance of going to the right of the desired action, which the right of going this direction would be down. And so the reward in that state is 0 0.660. And there's a 10% chance of going to the left of the desired state, which would just bounce us off this wall and put us back where we started. So there's a 10% chance of winding up where we started, and that state has a reward of 0 0.918. And in all of these states, because we're doing a movement action, we have a movement cost of 0 0.04 happening there. Now, the reason this cost can be taken out is that it's the same in all directions. But if different actions had a different cost, we would include this uh, movement cost in the individual terms along with the probabilities. So if you calculate this result, it will come out approximately to 0 0.918. Of course, to calculate this result, we actually already had to know this result. Uh, it's defined in terms of itself. We also had to know this value, the value in this state, which we wouldn't necessarily know without also already knowing this state. So given these values, we can confirm that they all make sense, but how we actually compute these values is an issue we'll leave to a later time. But before I do that, there is one more thing I want to show you. What we're seeing here are the state values. So the reason that the value in this state is 0 0.611 is that it assumes we will follow this policy. Another way of thinking of that is that the value of moving left in this state is that value. Similarly, looking back at the policy here, in this state we're moving to the right. So the value of moving right in this state is 0 0.918. We can make that more explicit with a diagram that looks like this. Here, each of these squares is split into fourths, and the value here is the same as the value there. The reason for that is that the position of this number in this square indicates that moving to the right, which is the optimal action, has this value. Similarly, in this square, 
moving to the right, which is the action here, has this value. Now I haven't completely filled out this figure, but for the parts that I have filled out, here's the justification. What does, for example, this number mean here, 0 0.675? Well, it means that if we're in this state, and rather than picking the optimal action of moving right, we choose to move down, that action followed by using this policy has a value of 0 0.675. So we can demonstrate that like so. If I choose to move down, which will happen successfully 80% of the time, then I'll wind up in a state where the optimal action is to move up, which has this value. So it's a value of 0 0.66. There's also a 10% chance that I will immediately get the plus one reward and a 10% chance that I'll move this direction and then have to follow the policy again, which the policy says to move right. And so that action in this state has a value of 0 0.868. And all of those actions have movement penalty associated with it. Or rather, this expression turns out to be 0 0.675. So the value of moving down from this state is 0 0.675. These are Q values. A Q value is the value of taking a given action in a particular state and then afterwards following some designated policy, in this case the optimal policy. And what you'll see in the squares I've calculated Q values for, and in the rest if you calculate them out yourself, is that the action the policy actually chooses is the action with the highest value. That is the reason that that is the optimal action. It's the action with the highest expected value. Moving to the right has a higher expected value than moving down, up, or left. Here, moving up has a higher expected value than moving left, down, or to the right. It's a negative value there. And here, moving to the left has a higher expected value than any of the other options. So that's why the actual state value in each of those states is the same as the best Q value. 